come with us now, if you dare, down a rickety staircase into a dank, dark basement. What awaits the Saturday Night Freak Show? <laughs> hey, welcome back to the Saturday Night Freak Show podcast. If this is your first rodeo with the Saturday Night Freak Show podcast, we're a movie review podcast where a movie is chosen round robin each week by a member of the group, and then we sit around and talk about it for your listening pleasure hey do us a favor wherever you found us go give us a like a star rating or review because all that stuff gets us uh the help that we need to be found by all the other intelligent life forms in the galaxy uh these are the internet radio superstars holly john michaela and i'm colin and tonight we watched a movie that was chosen by michaela uh, michaela what do we watch tonight we watched Serenity, not the Joss Whedon Serenity, 2019 <laughs> Serenity. Why not? <laughs> well, we all have great love for the 20, what was it, 2005 Serenity? Joss Whedon? I've never so. seen it. There I've is, never seen it. Oh, yeah? I've never seen it. Oh, wow. I've never seen Firefly. You don't yeah, need to to see the movie. Either, so. Yeah, the movie's like a standalone thing. I mean, it does oh. complete it. Whatever. Yeah. Um, <laughs> so uh, this movie, 2019, you said? Correct. The distant past. Um, hey, things were very different then. That's what I'm saying. It was a whole, <laughs> a whole different world different. almost, you could say. Um, and it was directed by... Stephen Knight. Who we would know from... Oh, buckle up. A lot of tough guys. Um, so he was a big time TV and movie writer for a long time. He wrote uh, Eastern Promises. He wrote the nice movie Allied. Uh, uh, he wrote that... Horrible uh, the comedy Burnt with Bradley Cooper. <laughs> um, he also, uh, you guys would probably know him best for writing and directing Locke. That's the one with uh, Tom Good Hardy. Movie. It's a fantastic movie with Tom yep. Hardy, yes. Tom Hardy. Yeah. What, you're sure. saying that people wouldn't know him best from being the co-creator of Who Wants to Be a Millionaire? I mean, do people know who the creators of shows like that are? <laughs> <laughs> no, they do not. no, they don't. But they are familiar with his work. The guy who created a game show, and that may play into uh, our discussion tonight. He does uh, collaborate with Tom Hardy a lot as well. We said uh, Locke, but he also co-created Taboo, and he created Peaky Blinders. Oh. So, hmm. so we had some good British. British. I haven't, I haven't watched British. either of those. Um, so this movie. All right, so I think we're going to have to. Um, Would you like to hear the taglines first? Yeah, I think before we spoil <laughs> the shit out of it, let's go and because uh, just I want to give people a spoiler warning. Uh, I think in order to talk about this movie, we're going to be spoiling. It is a movie that uh, depends on a twist. And so uh, fair warning, uh, this discussion is going to blow this movie wide open because I don't know how I should talk about it unless talking about what it's actually about. Oh, you got to right. talk about it. All right. What's the tagline for Serenity? Well, anyway, who's, yeah, who's in this movie? Yeah. Matthew McConaughey, Anne Hathaway, Jaman Hansu, Jason Clark, and Diane Lane. Okay, so this is not a small budget uh, rinky dink little picture. This is a big Hollywood production. $25 million movie. Right. And how much did it make at the box office? 14 <laughs> Damn. Yeah, it, made, it made a lot more in Canada than it did in the States. I did like twice as much. I did a little bit of looking up and it said that the uh, initial projection for this movie was that it was going to open like with $7 million. And I think it finished somewhere south of 4 million on its opening weekend. And that was really without any kind of uh, promotional push, because to be honest with you, I hadn't even heard of this movie until Michaela. Brought I hadn't it either. <laughs> Most people hadn't. Actually, the, pr the marketing push was a big controversy because uh, the, Eviren, Eviren pictures, which was one of the four logos we saw at the beginning of this movie. Um, they told the stars that they were going to do a typical press junket for like your blockbuster 2500 screen release. And the closer it got to the movie, they were just like, yeah, this tested really poorly. So we're just going to dump it in January. And they didn't tell like the stars that until like three weeks before it was about to come out. And so th there was, they, they shit talk this movie a lot and said that, like they just didn't know how to market it and how it could have been successful, but they didn't even try. It was a big thing. I can see marketing being a problem with this movie. I watched the trailer to figure out after I watched it, like, how do you sell this? 
and it really was uh, more interesting. Yeah. Well, first of all, it's okay if, as far as marketing goes. What what are our taglines for Serenity? They are bad. Um, on Plymouth Island, no one ever dies unless you break the rules. Okay. Yeah. Um, there is a place you can escape your past as long as you follow every rule. Okay. And number three, truth lies beneath the surface. Mm. Those are terrible. Bad. This that is a movie really generic. where yeah. the marketing crew had no idea how to sell it. Well, I mean, we've already tipped it off, I guess, when we're talking about it, that it's a movie that re- that is it's based on a twist. And so the question is, how do you sell a movie to the audience that would appreciate it if you can't tell them what it's about? Right? Here's the thing. This movie, like, before it's the twist, it is very much a uh, like, neo-noir thriller, right? Okay. So just market mm-hmm. it as yeah. that movie. Yeah, this is very yeah. noir. They could have really done that. I think that's yeah. what, well, that is, that seems to be the angle that they were going for in the, at least on the trailer that I watched. And obviously in the, uh, the poster art for the movie, um, which it looks like, I don't know, it's one of those, you know, movies where, well, I mean, even the, the, the log line is basically that, uh, Matthew McConaughey is a, um, captain of a, like a fishing boat. And his ex-wife, which is Anne Hathaway, shows up on this island where he lives and recruits him to murder her new husband, who's an abusive piece of shit bastard played by Jason Clark. All right. So that uh, this is where we're jumping right into spoiler territory here, right? Jumping right in with both feet. Okay. So that's basically the story that you have been uh, sold Okay, but yeah. that is not what the movie. Will he murder the husband? Right, right. Well, what do we know about this uh, this character of uh, what's his name? Baker Dill. <laughs> How did you forget? I was Baker just asking Dill, you. Yeah, right. <laughs> <laughs> Baker Dill is his name. He's a salty sea captain. When we first meet him, he is. Uh, we we see him uh, trying to catch an elusive tuna fish. A giant tuna, which he has nicknamed Justice. And the the cold open of the movie is basically, uh, which I'm assuming is allegory for, you know, where his character is going to go, that he just can't let the fish go. He's got to keep on re- reeling it in, even when it's hazardous to his health and the, the people that he brought, he's brought with him on this boat. Right. Yeah. Everyone keeps telling him to go catch the fish in his head. Like the fish in his head. That's the phrase said like 50 times in this movie. Yeah. <clears throat> even the radio tells him to do it. I think Jaman Hansu even says, and the only tuna you're chasing is the one in, in your head, which is a really <laughs> funny way to put that. Yeah, just that line <laughs> by itself. <laughs> yeah. Well, we're, we're tipped up. So, I mean, basically, we're, we settle in and there's uh, a lot of, uh, you know, island life kind of thing. Uh, he, um, you know, he has a partner, right? Jamon Hansu is his partner on the boat. Uh, he mm-hmm. goes back every night and has sex with Diane Lane, who's uh, apparently paying him for the pleasure of sleeping with Matthew McConaughey. Yeah, Diane Lane is like, like, McConaughey is like her personal gigolo. I will pay yeah. Diane Lane. <laughs> I, will, I will make that statement right now. But this right. is where I was like, wait. Right. Diane Lane does not need to pay. No. No, she doesn't. <laughs> no. She does not need to pay. That's bullshit. Well, I started becoming a feared of the movie uh, slightly before then, but that was definitely like, I'm like, where are we going with this? Like, this is, you know, we're somewhere off in loopy land. Um, but then uh, who else is on the island? I, I think that's basically the primary characters, uh, aside from when Anne Hathaway shows up. And then Jason Clark, obviously. But the movie starts, and this is always why you got to watch for these context clues with movies like this, because they always do this kind of thing where, like, the movie starts off, like, right after the logos. It's almost subliminal, right? You see, you're looking at this kid's eyes, an extreme Sergio Leone close-up, and then you fly in through the kid's iris, and then we come up, you know, into the water, and then we fly across the surface of the water to the, the fishing boat, right? And mm-hmm. I think sometimes they do this in movies, so you're you're designed to forget 
that moment. Yeah. <clears throat> but I always go like, that's a clue about something. You know, it's like, I don't know what relevance this right. has at this point, but that has something to do with the, with the movie. And uh, right. so what are these, uh, there's a bunch of, okay, so maybe if you can describe for me what the, there's scenes cut into the movie and like, what else is, what, what else are we seeing here? What are we supposed to take from what else is happening in this? Well, we keep cutting back to like a young teenage, young early teens kid in his room at a computer randomly. A lot. A little visual of, of what he's doing on it and he's fishing. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And lots his- of coding. Lots yeah. of coding. Because we're always getting coding. that scene Words where Words and numbers on the screen to show that he's smart. Yeah. And we see him with, I think, uh, Matthew McConaughey. A different version when he's really young. Right. Okay. So Matthew McConaughey has seen with a kid. We don't know that this yeah. is, if this is the same kid. I think this is, we're, we're, we're putting things together at this point, right? We're saying, well, either his kid died. Maybe the kid was eaten by the tuna. Maybe that's why he. They, they heavily inferred that at some point, I think. I'm pretty sure. Yeah, like in that cold open when he's like reeling in tuna, you cut to, like you get this quick like flashback almost of like him and the kid when they're younger, and like that implies that those two things are connected. Right. I really wanted McConaughey yelling like, "You ain't my fucking kid." <laughs> <laughs> I think that would have been great. Well, I mean, wouldn't... he is pretty unhinged in this movie at parts. He yells at the sky. He really is in this movie. <laughs> he's very angry yelling. very angry character this is the thing he's really I asked. quick to pull a knife <laughs> <laughs> yeah did you is is <laughs> is mcconaughey a likable character is, or, or sorry uh what's his name what was it uh baker dill, baker dill. Baker i was gonna dill. say braxton dill no that's not right baker oh, dill? dill no uh no no we we do not like baker dill okay but why because he's mean to everybody yeah, he's an asshole. He's got he's got a really nice, helpful first mate best friend, and he's like mean to him, and he's like, "Hey, your dead wife's the reason I'm not catching shit." What? Oh yeah, damn. I about what? That. I mean, I realize why yeah. he said it, but damn. Yeah, this is a pretty awful burn. <laughs> so, cool. I would say I'm you know what? Cool. So you're bad luck. You're, style. Huh? I would say I'm more just jealous of his lifestyle than like because he like gets him paid as a character. Sex with Diane Lane. When he lives on this tropical island and his job seems to be just going fishing every day. Yeah, how do you live on that island, do that job, and just be angry all the time? He's angry all the time. Yeah, well, there's a reason why. You'd be be angry if you were him, too. Why would he be angry ever? (laughs) Yeah. And he lives... He's not even uh, happy about that. He doesn't live in a house because none of these types of characters ever do. He lives in a, uh, like, reconditioned cargo container or something out on a cliff. He takes his quote-unquote shower by swimming naked in the, uh, the ocean. Which always made me wonder, like, you know, because he jumps off the cliff, right, into the ocean. Ah, he so refreshing. Mm-hmm. How, he how's, doesn't dive into it. How does he get back up? He's naked. <laughs> Fine. Fine. Hopefully there's a path somewhere. Oh, yeah. Okay. I kind of hate butt in this movie. And then, uh, yeah, well, yeah, and then, then um, uh, Anne Hathaway shows up, and she is basically designed to be our femme fatale, if we're going with the noir thing, right? This is double indemnity or something yeah. with the plot, you know, yeah. where she wants to get rid of her husband. And uh, so basically she... And let's, well, let, we, we, need, we have to point out the fact that they went to high school together because Anne Hathaway and, Mac- and Matthew McConaughey are the same age. Wait, you don't think they're the same age? The same <laughs> age. How old do you think she is? Like in her 30s? How old do I think she is? Yeah. I think she's the same age as me. I think she's about 34. Okay. McConaughey's in his 50s, right? He's in his 50s. But he looks like a yeah, fresh yeah. young lad. Nah. <laughs> I mean, he looks not good. That fresh, he looks not that fresh. <laughs> yeah. He looks great, but not 30. No. Well, the two of them, so they had a relationship, and the idea is that they had a son right that uh, then we're like okay the son that you're talking about here is the kid that we've been seeing she says that her son their son who lives with her and the abusive prick um sits in his room all day he plays video games he's got a computer he's, yep. he he sits in there and plays video games this is the the point is drawn on this in a way that uh it stands out you know it's like Okay, that's that's you're you're making a really fine point about this, and they keep kind of bringing it up that the kid is always playing video games. Um, 
we're introduced at this point to the uh the asshole uh uh stepfather or whatever jason clark who is like a supreme asshole like in a way that's not believable it's kind of one of those cartoon bad guy kind of ways he apparently absolutely is he like uh chains the chest hair all of it so he's like new jersey mafia or something like that I think he's supposed to be like, yeah, but I think he's also supposed to be Greek because did you guys catch what they kept saying his last name was? Yeah. It was like Zara Caius or something. (laughs) Yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Greek mafia. Got a lot of that in New Jersey, probably. Okay. So uh, Jason Clark's finest acting so far. Probably. honestly. Probably. Right. At least he's trying something. (laughs) Yeah. He's doing something. Well, it gives him a lot of uh, it's one of those parts that gives an actor a lot of uh like i don't know if you range but you're always playing in the high notes of just yeah. screaming and yelling at people and you know we I see- want to back up for just a second because when Anne Hathaway is explaining how she was able to track him down and find him Matthew McConaughey uh, this logic is insane the dialogue like- <laughs> is baffling it's I think it's supposed to be one of those like really like snappy like femme fatale monologue moments but she's just not pulling it off and like, but she says that she was able to find him because they went to high school together and there was a, some class reunion and the only two people that didn't show up were her and him. So then she searched and found out that he changed his name to Baker Dill because the only teacher he ever respected in high school's name was Dylan Baker. His math teacher, right? Specifically. Why do, why do we need to know any of this? Well, this all comes in. You don't, but it comes into play once we know the twist, then all of this makes sense. Or does it? Yeah. <laughs> I don't even know why he changed his name or that he liked a teacher once. Yeah. Uh-uh. And this is a really long monologue she gives when they're on the boat. Very emotional. My favorite, li- my favorite line was, in the, real w- in the real world, we have this thing called Facebook. Because <laughs> <laughs> he's on a Plymouth Island or whatever the hell it is. I like the way that there's, an, uh, there's a radio announcer always broadcasting <laughs> who's like love- extremely on point. I love the island radio vibe of that guy, of that whole thing. Remind me of the fog. Yeah. That's exactly but, what it's like when you yeah. play Grand Theft Auto. Yeah. It's 98 degrees outside and the air smells of sugar cane. It's perfect day for you to go out and catch that fish. They're always well, telling them to go. You, f- Baker Dill. <laughs> yeah, they may as well. I think the I mean, radio, it, did at, it did at one point. Yeah. After the twist. Holly, my That's favorite line in this movie was, uh, McConaughey says, yeah, I'm a hooker that can't afford hooks. Mm. Yeah. <laughs> this is from the award winning uh, creator of who wants to marry a, or who wants to be a millionaire. Um, okay. So uh, we, we, we need to, we, at, at some point when we reveal what the twist is, we need to revisit some of these things from a new perspective. Yeah. That's yeah. yeah. We got to get there like fast if, so if we can you, go if back. You know what and, I'm saying? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so, well, I think the last little bit of setup is uh, uh, Jason Clark's character. We get to see a scene where he uh, apparently the way he exercises his uh, control over Anne ha- or Hathaway is that um, like he he shows up in a plane, which we don't see that, but in in his so in her hotel room, forces her to strip. And then goes over her body with a fine tooth comb to basically see if there's any nick scratches or anything that can't be explained. And then he beats her with his uh, belt. This is to establish that this guy is just a complete and total creep, right? We're in. And then to make matters worse, when he goes out fishing with, because of course he wants to rent the boat and go out, he's talking about like, you know where I can find those 10 year old girls who like to get fucked in the ass or something like that. So, and it's like, what? Yeah. what? what? <laughs> this is like way over the top kind of stuff, right? Where it's like, we, yeah, we get it. We got from the last scene. He's a bad guy. Okay. You don't need to keep hammering it in. Yeah. It's like, who's yeah. the worst guy, him or Matthew McConaughey? McConaughey, I guess, is our, because he's our protagonist, we believe that he's our uh, hero, right? Even though he basically acts sure. like about as much of an asshole as uh, Clark does. Um, and the only other character, only other incidental character that I can think to introduce is this little guy in spectacles that is always arriving just after McConaughey leaves, you know, the dock in his boat. He's always late to catch him and he always really wants to tell him something. 
And he's yeah. in a suit with a briefcase. He's like kind of a nerdy looking dude. Yeah. Make her do. Make her do. We first see him when he's just on the beach and he, what's he doing? He takes off his shoes to walk through the water to go somewhere. Okay. So basically our pieces are on the board. Everything is set. Will McConaughey kill uh, the husband? Uh, that becomes basically, I guess, the focal point of the storyline, right? Right. And we should say that Jason Clark doesn't know that McConaughey is Anne Hathaway's ex. Right. Okay. Right. She's she's arranged it so it's like, oh, I, I'm surprising him with like a professional fishing trip and this is the greatest fisherman on the island kind of thing. Yeah. I did not believe their relationship at all, but I suppose you're not supposed to because, I mean, I sat there saying, like, there's no way that, you know, when, when Hathaway shows up, she's very in charge of herself, you know? I mean, she's very composed, collected, and like a manipulator, a femme fatale. Then you realize that, you know, she's been beaten down by this guy and has no self-esteem, and I'm like, oh, I can't put those two, you know, uh, things together. Well, that's because, ultimately, you're not supposed to because... It's all irrelevant anyway. Um, okay, so is it around here that we get uh, things begin to uh, uh, things about the world itself begin to uh, kind of fall apart? Um, there is a lot of uh, uh, I don't know. Should we just like explain what the hell is actually happening and go back? Yeah. Okay. All right. So. Well, it's your movie, Michaela. Take it away. What the hell is going on in this movie, Serenity? Well, so, you should, uh, describe the uh, the meeting scene. Finally, I think that'll be a good oh, setup. Oh, for- with with the guy in the glasses. Yes. Okay. So the guy in the glasses uh, is a character literally named the Rules. Mm-hmm. The rules have changed, and he's here to offer like a cheat code, basically, to keep. McConaughey on the course of the main game, which is catch justice, catch the fish. He's offering him like sonar. And this is kind of like the decision making aspect. Are you going to be a black hat or a white hat kind of thing? Yeah. And uh, this is when we find out it's all a video game. (laughs) Minds are being blown, right? I know. I know. Because you didn't know (laughs) when you started playing this episode that we were going to be talking about a science fic movie, but it turns out we are. Um, yeah, the whole thing. Figured out. I can't remember what I mean. Like the, the, I just kept remembering. Like the kid at the beginning had the, you know, uh, I was putting like the clues together. We got a kid. You're seeing it from a kid's point of view. Kid sits in his room all the time on a computer. There's always whenever we see the kid, you can hear people screaming off camera and like, and I'm like, there's some like separate narrative taking place here, and then they keep on like a character, because I guess I play a lot of video games, like a character in a video game, they are constantly presenting Baker Dill with decisions. Like, and they Mm. draw a point on the fact that it's like, well, you can do this or you can do that. And then like a second later, another decision tree comes up where it's like, well, you could do this or you could do that. And I'm like, what the time that Mm -hmm. he is like talking to like a, what would be an NPC they they don't stop the conversation until he answers every question. They just keep look. They keep repeating some questions sometimes until he gives them an answer. And that and like that's where I really noticed it um, when he's in the shop buying the like a oh, hooker can't afford hooks scene. He's literally picking up objects and asking what the price is, and then she says the price. And then when he checks out, she lists off like the price of each individual item and not his total. And I was like, yeah, this is straight up video game dialogue. <laughs> And yeah, the, I got that feeling and when the, Anne Hathaway paid for the drink at the bar. Mm-hmm. Like there was another, and that felt like the video game exchange going on there. And there was like a camera, mo- weird camera moves that were taking place too, where the camera would like circle around uh, a character in a way that kind of made it seem yeah. like this is video okay, game when camera. When a new character entered the narrative, they like got like a little intro, like camera movement. Yeah. 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 And there was definitely like every, like there was, I mean, the other main people were the bartender and the woman who runs like the bait shop. They were both very expositional. Like they knew everything happening on the island. It's like, why do you know that? Yeah, that was the other thing. Yeah, you have to be programmed to know that. Yeah, because they would be like Hansu, the follower NPC. That's like, so did you want me to come with you tomorrow? And I was like, yeah, he wants to know if he's going on this quest with you. Yeah. Yeah. 
<laughs> the characters, because if you're coming into this just like watching a, as a movie, I'm sitting there like having logic problems with the fact that like everybody, the woman at the bait shop tells him like, uh, you know, that the, the the Anne Hathaway's husband arrived on a plane. He went over to the hotel. He beat her with a with a uh, belt and all this stuff. And you're like, how in the fuck yeah. do you know all this stuff? I mean, they knew every yep. intimate detail of every other character's lives when they need to, uh, you know, when they need to know it, <laughs> you know, or even when they don't. They're just like omniscient. But at first you go like, well, this is lazy, bad screenwriting, right? But if you understand that the whole thing's a video game world, it's like, well, okay, then that makes actually perfect sense. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Okay, but there's still... That doesn't mean I, it's still a shitty experience going through it the first time. Yeah. <laughs> That's the problem I have. Like, okay, it's so funny this makes it sense. It's still shitty. So uh, many of your guys' reactions last night, I just, like, couldn't respond to because I didn't want to give anything away, but, like... When you guys are like, what the fuck is up with that weird camera movement? When like Jason Clark came in and Anne Hathaway came in, I'm like, yeah, yeah it'll make sense eventually. So who, okay. So at this point you have a problem with like, okay, so this is the thing with the movie, right? Uh, as far as from a marketing point of view, you've got a movie about the video game experience. Uh, not so much. This is like a, it's like Tron or something where the Truman show or something where the yeah. character is unaware that they are living in a video game, right? Um, and so yeah. the whole video game thing, I think, turns a lot of people off, right? The normies don't really give two fucks about video games, especially when you're pitching this thing as a noir thriller, right? Which has a completely different audience, I think, than uh, the people who would be interested in a science fiction video game movie. How would you market, I mean, like, what angle would you take to sell this movie in a way that somebody would actually want to go fucking see it. Well, that's the the problem with a movie like this is that the twist, it's going to go one or two ways. Either people are going to be like, that's so fucking stupid. Or people are going to be like, Oh, my mind was blown. That was amazing. And I think mm -hmm. you just kind of have to take that risk and like hide the twist as best you can and hope it comes off. Well, um, yeah. I think you do a trailer with, um, Anne Hathaway saying daddy all the times that she does in this movie. And oh, put that oh. out there. <laughs> and that'll draw somebody in. She calls uh, Jason Clark daddy, <laughs> you know, uh, all the time in a kind of oh. sick, sick, twisted way. I felt dirty. He demands it. Like, yeah. he was like, I'm sorry, what do you call me? Because she said something else and then she corrected herself. And that was the really gross moment. Well, see, in hindsight, yeah. then this all makes sense because we're, we're led to believe that this is a video game world that was created. I assume it's, that's what it sounds like. Like, uh, McConaughey or the, the son, the kid, uh, created the video game, right? The, the son did at the end of the movie. They say the he was a did. math genius, right? So it was his te math teacher was named whatever the hell that, uh, Baker, Baker, Dylan Dill Baker. Dill there you go. Yeah, I think he was the, the principal. I think he'd, um, what I'd put together is that Baker Dill went to uh, the school. He was the math teacher then. The kid goes to the same school. Now he's moved up to principal because they mentioned he's the principal. Okay. That's very... That little detail there doesn't you go. matter, oh, but I'm going to give it to you. Oh, my God. It, does, it doesn't matter. I'm glad that you <laughs> caught that, Sean. That's very uh, astute and observant. Um, <laughs> the, um, so... If the kid, so that, so, but that also goes to explain, I suppose, why uh, she always calls him daddy, because to the kid's point of view, he's saying, call me daddy, right? I mean, these, we don't see this, but this goes into like the psychology of like who or why the whole world is the way that it is, because it was invented well, by a kid. And this is where it gets gross and weird, <laughs> because there's a lot of sex in this movie for a video game movie. As in, like, uh, McConaughey screwing uh, Lane, Diane Lane, then he has yep. sex with uh, uh, Anne Hathaway. I love the Hathaway when he does it with Anne Hathaway. He's like, I win! I won! I win. <laughs> I, win. I, won. <laughs> I win. More like, video oh, oh, game okay. stuff that we don't know at the oh, time. Can you, or can you, when you're thinking back on these scenes, are you imagining them you know, in 8-bit? <laughs> the 8-bit version of these people doing this? Because I am. I see it as like, all like polygons. I see 8-bit uh, McConaughey putting his hands up with a bubble that says, I won. Yeah. I want to do Dixon. like a Photoshop, like NES cartridge of Serenity the game now. Well, the whole yeah, thing... Okay, so here's... Okay, but it... So, 
this is uh, what are we saying? We're like maybe midway through the movie, right? When it what I'm trying to say is this kid wrote a video game where he fucks his own mom in the video game. And we're supposed to accept that as a reality of this movie. Well, he's putting back what we learn is, uh, and this is again, you know, through uh, our own brain working, right? Cause it's not, I don't know if it's actually stated. I guess it is. Uh, McConaughey's character is the kid's representation of his father. His father apparently died in Iraq. He was a soldier. He went to Iraq and he died. He never came back. So his mom, the kid's mom, remarried an abusive bastard. Uh, So the kid has created an avatar of his dad, who's now a fisherman named Baker Dill, who lives off Mm -hmm. an island and has all these awesome adventures. And so, of course, he writes his mom in there. So, like, mom and dad would still have some type of relationship. And he wants to kill uh, the dad in this virtual thing. So he, the kid has introduced a new plot to the video game, which used to be just about fishing and about, uh, you know, whatever the other games were that you can partake of on this island, right? So the kid has changed the rules. This causes the character whose name is the rule, the little bespectacled fellow. He's to, like Reed Miller. Well, okay, but this is what name. I don't. But he's the rules. I don't get this at all. Like, because, I mean, again, we're halfway through the movie and there's still like some crazy shit ahead of us, right? Because now it's like basically in the video game, McConaughey's new goal is to kill uh, the Jason Clark character. So what does the rules, I mean, he, I don't understand, maybe you can explain this to me. I don't understand how a character in a video game is self-aware because he basically comes to McConaughey and lays the whole thing out for him. He's like, you're not a real person. I'm not a real person. This is all a video game world and you have to catch the fish. Don't kill the guy because there's never been anyone killed in this game before. It's against the rules and it's going to break the game. Here's the thing. I think it's supposed to be, there's obviously this internal struggle going on in this kid, right? Do I, do I Mm -hmm. just kind of like escape into my video game and just fish with my dad? Or do I actually take action in the real world and solve this situation for my mom and I, and this, this exact scene is that struggle playing out and finding out who's going to win. Yeah, exactly. I don't think we're seeing the actual like coding of the game. We're seeing the inside of his psyche. You know, I don't think that, I, I think it's really blurred of what's happening in the game and what's happening in his head. I don't think it's actually part of the game. Well, this okay. I get what you're saying because there are scenes when McConaughey is talking with the rules where the where we see an angle where the rules aren't there, right? Like mm-hmm. the guy's not right. standing there and then, you know, it cuts to another angle and the guy is in front of him. I'm thinking of that scene on the beach or whatever. Yeah. Right. So okay. Yeah. So are you saying that the the conflict is taking place within McConaughey's psyche, which this is a virtual character in a video game, right? This is what we're. So he is having a moral struggle, and so he's envisioning the rules. So the kid didn't actually write the no. rules. You're saying he didn't write the character the rules. No, I'm saying this is happening in the kid's head, not not Matthew McConaughey's. He's just. He's just a persona that the kid is using to deal with his shit. We're seeing the kid's head. I don't know that one. I, I don't know. I what don't know. I think what, is what do you guys think is, about that? Do you remember when Anne Hathaway said like, oh, he can hear you through the computer, sp- computer screen. And like, we see a lot of Matthew McConaughey talking to himself and like then cut back to like mm-hmm. his kid, quote unquote, hearing it. The water on the mm-hmm. table scene. What well, I was laughing my fucking ass off at that. I could not believe I was supposed to take that seriously. Which is but, what happens there. And that happens so early on in the movie. Before there, you're, you're, there's even a whiff of there being a twist, she tells him he can hear you through the computer screen, which yeah. is insane. Which yeah. is an absolutely yeah. insane thing to say to someone in this movie. Yeah, which yeah. is another clue. Yeah, I guess I should explain this water on the table <laughs> scene. But so Matthew McConaughey like wakes up and he's all wet. This is after his shower. At, wakes up and he's all wet at his kitchen table and he's just like rubbing his hand in this puddle on the table and we cut to the kid in his room at his desk rubbing his hand into a wet puddle on the table so like mm-hmm. SS supposed to show I don't I you know I it's don't insane know. it's insanity 
It's insanely on film. I don't understand. I laugh out loud every time I see that because it's just so stupid. There's no twist that justifies that. (laughs) Well, I'm trying to figure out, like, I mean, what the whole uh, point of this is, but we'll we'll get there, I guess, as we talk. Um, So... But here, okay, so so McConaughey is confronted with this idea and immediately is like, oh yeah, nobody's actually real. So then he wanders around town talking to the other NPC characters, like you don't even know why you say the things you do. It's like, look at you, you don't, you know, you're just like a a product of this. The whole thing's all make believe, right? Which is, mm-hmm. it's very self aware. Like he has become this self aware AI. Is like how I'm taking it because I'm like I don't know what the fuck how else you're supposed to read this he's self-aware I still think it's I I still think that's the kid breaking down and this is like the interpretation we're seeing of that like the kids the kids own morality is breaking down so his in in, in the video game world it's self real it's self-realization so he's right? putting these his, characters into the video game world to like try and talk him out of committing murder yeah because like the video game it's, it's a trial it's run internal for struggle yeah Okay, well, that is where this is going. Ultimately, by the end of it, it's like, yeah, yeah, we are. This is a movie which is saying that video games uh, are basically murder simulators that train kids how to kill people in the real world. Yeah, because it doesn't matter how peaceful you start, you'll still get corrupted. Because remember, the game started being you couldn't kill anyone. Yeah. So it's obviously the game ruined this kid. So that's message number one, which, again, I think to the audience who would appreciate this movie... You're, you know, it's like, I'm like, who the fuck is the audience for this? <laughs> it's a very old timey attitude to have about video games. Yeah. Is it a cautionary tale to the, you know, people who would actually go see the Anne Hathaway, Matthew McConaughey movie? <laughs> like your kids are out there and this is the kind of shit that I'm like, what? <sighs> it can't even be a fishing game. Even a fishing game will corrupt them. Yeah. I'm going to posit that none of this movie is a video game. Okay. Let's hear I this. Think- I think it's just all in his head. I think he's playing a video game because we see a little bit of it, but I think this is all in his head. We also see him coding a lot. We do. And, and we he's see, a math yeah. genius. And later we see him modeling characters and we see the fish from the virtual version of the, or not the fish, but the boat, you know. He has that piece of paper that just says justice on his wall. Justice. For no reason. Yeah, because he wants justice. He wants justice because his stepdad. Or his dad. This is an anti-war movie. Is what this is. Oh, yeah. He wants justice yeah, for his dad. Fair. Shit. Well, it also is trying to say uh, the way that I read it, right? Because, I mean, this is, you know, uh, McConaughey is basically saying that the, where basically your characters are living in a, in a virtual world, you know, like the real people living in a virtual environment, right? But in this one, this is where I had the problem with it. I'm like, McConaughey is not a real person. He's right. like, he's been created in the, the, you know, in the, the style of the kid's father, but he isn't actually the kid's father. Right. But he somehow right. intuits as if like spirituality is coming into this in some way. Right. He intuits that. So maybe he does have the father's soul in some way. He intuits that the son is out there. And what the son wants is he wants McConaughey to kill the character of Jason Clark in the video game. And so he is bound and no. determined to make that happen in order to win the game because he's even able to convince the rules, the guy, the character, it's like, these are the new rules. This is the new objective of the game. Well, okay, then I'll try and help you uh, carry that out. This is, no it's souls. the kid. This no is, souls in this It's column. all the kid. No, it's, the there's kid. no soul. This is, yeah, this is the kid's coping mechanism. This is his version of his dad. You know, this is how he's, this is how his dad is living inside of him. He's not actually stuck in any dimension or anything. He's living in the kid's head. Well, yeah, I mean, I know, I know that that's where the movie is actually taking us. It's like, it's not actually, well, that's what I'm saying. It's not McConaughey's soul. It's not doing that. It's saying he's no. just a virtual avatar. But then, I mean, yeah. that's why I'm, that's well, why. Why does he into it? Yeah. Why does he into that? He is not like the, if there is no soul, you know, thing or whatever, how does a virtual, this is my problem with these kind of movies. How when they try to get aware? you yeah. to become, um, emotionally attached to basically what I consider it's like, a, it's a toaster. 
you know, I had this problem with AI. They're trying to make the little boy in AI like an emotional, uh, you know, pivot point or focus. And but I'm like, but he, he's not a real boy. <laughs> you know, it is a robot. Right, this but is, that's not where it's coming from in this movie. It's coming from the fact that this kid is still getting his ass beat in real life. But the movie's not about yeah. the kid, though. It's about like Matthew McConaughey being an asshole running all over, and it becomes about Matthew McConaughey has to be able to. Yeah, but that's the trial run for the end of the movie. Okay, so at the end of the movie, the kid actually does. We see during because uh, uh, we, we need to back up a little bit first because Jaman Hansu has like a major moment that leads to a really weird moment. Is Jaman Hansu uh, basically hires a guy to beat up Jason Clark and break his hand so that he can't go on the fishing trip so that Baker Dill won't kill him. This somehow leads to a scene that I don't know why is important in the movie where Anne Hathaway makes Jason Clark choke her with his broken hand. <laughs> uh, so, what, why is this in the movie? I mean, I get what they're trying to do. Like, no, he's you know, because he's like, I can't go fishing today because if she if he goes fishing, Ghana has agreed to knock him over the edge of the boat. And he's like, I can't go fishing. My hand's been broken. There's like five guys came in here and beat me up. And she's like, no, baby, you've got strength enough to do it. Why don't you take your hand and imagine my throat is that fishing pole and squeeze? Because apparently that's what this guy loves to do is strangle and Hathaway, <laughs> and so it's somehow just, he will work himself into the like disturbing shit. <laughs> we watch we watch some weird movies. I'm disturbed by this film. So am I. Yeah, like on a on a like there's a there's a weird moral bankruptcy at play <laughs> in this really movie is. because the whole idea is, in the game is like yeah if you kill the the other guy right. We've established that he's a bad guy. So that means that he must die. We have to kill him. If you do that, that's a victory. And then the music's going to swell and everybody's going to be happy. And it plays like, uh, you know, so basically it's kind of championing this guy's murder at the hands of uh, Matthew McConaughey. And then to make that worse (laughs) at the end, it's like in the real world, you're right. The kid's been running a dry run to psych himself up to go take a knife and go out and stab uh, the dead were presented. This is like, well, it's because the uh, mom was suffering and the kid are suffering abuse at the hand of this guy. Right. So clearly he mm-hmm. deserves to die. <laughs> you know? right. I find this movie way too stupid to be disturbing. Honestly, it's just so dumb. I agree. The, the, <laughs> the, the, the uh, execution is so dumb. It's just the thought that went into it is yeah. what disturbs me. Like the intention of this and kind of like whatever their point they were trying to make. That's what disturbs me. Yeah, I, I, to me, like, I don't know. I, I'm like, okay, it makes sense. And once you find out the entire thing is from the kid's perspective, it's like, okay, now I understand why killing this guy is heroic. It makes sense to me. Like they're not championing, like championing, um, killing people. It's this kid was really happy about the death of his step like that's it it's not like it's it to me it's not as dark as you guys are making it yeah that's i i honestly like i've seen this like almost three times now and i like I, i've always just been like this movie's so stupid and, like right? never, yeah never, never, oh, wow. never deeper than that for it what happened on the almost <laughs> third time well like i i've tried watching it like a couple times here and there because like i've listened to so much content about this movie and then i just like eh I'm good. Turn it off. <laughs> like I can't do it again. Uh, how strong is this kid where he just got like one stab into the heart of his stepdad? I mean, come on. Well, he kills yeah, him. He kills him. And then again. after that, the, uh, the, we hear that the cops uh, arrested the kid. Right. But the mom says it was self-defense, which I'm like, that's not self-defense. If you walk into the other room and stab a fucking guy to death. Uh, and so he's going to be released to the custody of his mom. He's not actually going to prison. And then he, it's like, this is a, a victory. This is a win. The uh, Matthew McConaughey character gets to tell him something to the effect of, uh, I know we all have to do horrible things, but you did the right thing. As long as it's right. Yeah. I'm just like, this is yeah. fucked no it but it, it's it, the kid justifying i know his i know but it, but yeah. I, this is what i'm saying this is the mindset and because the rest of the movie also deals with a lot of like paranoia and what could be like conspiracy theory right where you're thinking where mcconaughey is seeing all this stuff uh characters behaving weird 
he's he becomes very paranoid for like the last third of the movie where it's like oh the whole world is against me and they're and when laying all these when things Diane Lane's son shows up out of nowhere yeah what was the point of that character being in this movie at all yeah that was weird because that he's another weird. NPC it was called in because Matthew McConaughey refused to take the uh, the rules gave him a fish finder that would guarantee it was a cheat code basically you take this you're going to get that fish you've always been after you can't catch it but you will if you take this and he says no so the next thing is the, that kid shows up and is like hey I've got these lures because in video game thinking the lures would be the special lure that would get the thing. And he says, no. And at the bait shop, they also try to give him these lures. It's like, if you take these lures, right. you'll catch that fish. So the, it is the game. And this is where that paranoid thing comes in. It's like, he's seeing like the entire world is, is rigged against him in his quest to kill this guy. <laughs> 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 right. Which I'm like, this is the thinking of, you know, like what they're saying, the like incel folks are where they sit and play video games all the time and they're paranoid about the entire world. And then they work themselves into a frenzy to actually go out and kill somebody. But in this movie, that's a positive thing. It's a good thing. Yeah. It's portrayed as being, <laughs> Hey, good job. It's like, what the hell? <laughs> yeah. That was, that's my view of it as well. <clears throat> I felt, kind of like uh, a little bit uh, dirty when this movie was over. <laughs> yeah. And I know that you were saying, about it. I know uh, Hollywood or was it Holly or Michaela is like, well, you guys watch a bunch of, or maybe Sean is like, you watch a bunch of fucked up shit. It's like, yeah, but they're usually morally on the side of, I mean, I watch like, okay, I spit on your grave is a movie in which you have to endure a horrific rape of this woman multiple times before she swings around and like gets her revenge. Right. So you are kind of, but it puts you in her perspective. It's not not championing that rape. Right. Right. You are the, you are with her, you're the victim of it. And then you're kind of, you know, I guess you are applauding murder at the end of it because you're like, you know, she got her revenge. The movie, the mentality of the person making the movie is on the side of right. Right. They're not identifying with the rapists. This feels like you're identifying with the psychopath, <laughs> right? Like a psycho yeah, wrote I this I movie. I don't know. I don't, I don't really see it that way. I feel like it's very similar. Like you're watching this kid break down because him and his mom are continually abused by this monster and he's finally getting his revenge. To literally me, every time we thing. come Literally every time we cut back to the kid's house, like the house is shaking practically because Jason Clark is having yeah. such a fit and screaming. Right. There's never a silent scene yeah. in that kid's house. And he has a black eye in that one scene too. Yeah, which I guess we're supposed to think that that actually was the real, you know, if you're trying to separate like real world from the, the virtual world, that's what's actually happening. Mm-hmm. That he is mm-hmm. being, yeah. But I don't know, yeah. So you just saw it as like it was... Uh, so what does the ending mean where the kid that is was the new finally game. in the game is it the new game did the kid the new game. die <laughs> no. <laughs> no, he, they said he got released back into the custody of his mom he remember? did yeah he did and so i think he finally this is his finished. new game now so now he's yeah. completely gone and now he's just in the game no i think he just created a new game or did he write yeah. himself into the, he just wrote like a kid yeah. character so he could actually in so his avatar could interact with his dad. Dead, fa- yeah. dead father and that's where they have like this whole you know the uh, murderer yeah <laughs> but it's that's great champ that's, you that's did really thing. good cha- championed murder and then the slow-mo hugging and <laughs> happiness of McConaughey and his son it's two flavors that don't work together it's weird yeah it's a very strange fucking movie it's, but it's- <laughs> But it's not weird. But it's not weird if you're remembering that this entire thing is the inside of this kid's head. Basically, he's a fucked up kid. Like this is him. This is him trying to cope. It's not as crazy when you remember that this is all like his escapism. But is it the whole thing? But you're saying he's trying to cope, but he's trying to work himself up to murder. It's not so much coping as it is him. Like starts off coping and then it switches when the rules. Yes, exactly. And like, I love that you guys are so hung up on the fact that like the, the, like that he murders his stepdad at the end of this, when this kid created a video game where he's playing as his dad, fucking women. And like, that's not at all disturbing to you guys. No, that's disturbing as well. That's very disturbing. (laughs) Why did he make his dad a hooker? Why? 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 It wasn't real life, right? 
No. I mean, maybe he's just thinking the same thing as us. He's like, I, I want my dad to have fun. I want my dad to fuck Diane Lane. Yeah. I'm going to play as and, my dad. And he's going to be so mom. awesome that she will want to pay him for it. It is kind of saying that the guy is such a badass, right? He's right? made this badass version of his dad. It's still like, uh, <laughs> because basically he, I mean, if you're looking at it objectively, he's a loser, right? He doesn't have a real job. He just kind of like goes that. around like fishing, you know, uh, for this one, like he actually pulls a knife, like you said, on the the paying customers to shoo them off the boat so he can chase down justice the big tuna <laughs> you know couldn't they make it a more majestic fish than tuna couldn't they make it like, just yeah, like a blue yeah. marlin or something well eventually you know? there are it's sharks that show up well, tuna is worth a lot of money <laughs> clearly does mcconaughey do it does he murder jason clark I don't think we said specifically. Oh, right, right. Oh, that's right. Yeah. This is a, a wonderful sequence where uh, Jason <laughs> Clark is a wonderful playing sequence. drunk, blind drunk, right? And he's on the boat, and uh, uh, they do eventually catch this fish. And basically, I, so he's... <sighs> well, he's trying <laughs> they to they, even... They hook the fish. They hook the fish. And even at the end here... <laughs> Fish. then the uh the game is still trying to impede his progress in his mission because then all of a sudden it turns out diane lane's son the helpful you know like hey i'll help you like the lucky guy shows up on the boat because he's stowed away and jimon hansu i think at this point is kind of uh like resigned to the idea of killing this guy right wasn't he like on board with this he's not on the boat He's not on the boat. It's Anne Hathaway is on the boat with him. Oh, that's right. Okay, okay, that's yeah, right. Because yeah. he had he he paid his his share to get the guy kneecapped, and then he fucked off. Yeah. Yeah. So basically, the method of murder isn't going to be to feed the guy to the sharks or anything. It's going to kind of be like, well, no. it's to call him daddy fish. until he kills himself. <laughs> and so they let the fish pull him into the depths. Yeah, because in the end, he chooses to fish like he was supposed to. <laughs> and, and bravo, what a way to put together two different storylines. You got the fish, you got murder, and it just goes into one. Wow. Now that, what more could you want? Writing, fish and murder. Yep. It's like Tuna and murder. Putting them together. Bravo. There was a scene, er, I know we were talking about like these guys playing drunk. There was a scene actually early on where I thought McConaughey was drunk. I can't remember when it was. I think it was when, because, uh, I mean, he goes to, like, some low lows, right? Like, the whole world is beating him down, and, like, you, won't, you know, he can't, like, you can't self-actualize. You can't do the thing that he's meant to do. And uh, I think it was when uh, the um, the rules guy shows up to him, like, the second time or something, and I'm like, wow, he actually does look like he's drunk. Did you believe that Jason Clark was drunk? How was his acting? Drunk acting. I mean, I agree. I kind of agree with Sean. I think this might be the best he's done. Yeah. Definitely the most I mean, memorable. I also don't want to do anything <laughs> when I am uh, when I am drunk, and he looked like he was doing a good job at that. It's like, no, I can't do it. It's very tense. We get to see a bunch of uh, like a recreation of that scene from Jaws because apparently you do actually have to strap yourself into a chair with the belt and put the little uh, bucket or whatever that you put the, mm-hmm. the is yep. it the hilt the hilt of the <laughs> of yes. the fishing rod into that secures you. But yeah, I kind of hate engineers it in a way. So as soon as the fish like pulls away, the guy's going to go off the edge with it. Well, all right. This is a very <laughs> strange and interesting movie. Interesting? Well, I don't know. Maybe. Strange and unusual. Yeah. Uh, well, I'll tell you what, listener. You think that we've talked this movie out, but that's not entirely true because what we're going to do, we're going to go around the room and tell you individually what we thought of it and whether you should see it. I know now you've basically virtually experienced the movie, but should you go see this for yourself? That is the question that you have to ask yourself. And so before that, we're going to answer some of your mail. And to do that, we're going to have to summon our mailman, and his name is Igor... Igor, bring us the mail. Masters, masters, the mail. I've got the mail. So many letters. Our followers are rising, rising. Well, thank you, Igor. Thanks, Igor. Igor is he's living in a virtual world all the time and doesn't know it. He doesn't know he's not real. I'm sure he does. Oh, he loves tuna. Yeah. 
and just keep him down there in the bottom of the boat. They're trying to catch justice, huh? Oh yeah. I think I think Igor is our justice. Well, I tell you what, listener, the way that you can write in and join the Freak Show family, and we hope that you do, uh, as you're suffering through the uh, quarantine as we are, or maybe you're not by now. Who knows? We're we're a week out. It could be lifted wherever you are. But we want you to write in. You can follow along on Facebook. Facebook.com slash Sat Freak Show. Or Twitter. At Sat Freak Show. Or you can email us. <clears throat> Saturday Night Freak Show at Yahoo.com. Or you can follow along on Instagram at Saturday Night Freak Show. Well, MF Mad, the keeper of the Wall of Fame, did not identify Jason Clark as being uh, introduced to the, the, the Wall of Fame that we have here at the Saturday Night Freak Show. Or if you're in a movie, an actor that's in a movie, three times you get your photo put up on the wall. But guess who is? Diane Lane. Diane Lane was oh, in uh, Streets of Fire, which we covered, Man of Steel, which we covered in an epic three and a half hour episode that no one has ever finished. And Serenity tonight. So Diane I don't Lane. Think we finished it. <laughs> yeah. So welcome to uh, the Wall of Fame. A little round of applause for I Diane deserve, Lane. Yes, I deserve it. Bravo, Miss Lane. <laughs> I uh, guess. I'm sorry I had to be this way. <laughs> well, just to be on there is an honor. Uh, okay, so about tonight's movie, Serenity, Jamie Tyler writes in and says, Ah, you guys, why do you need to sully your great show with movies from the past decade? Yeah. Oh, so I'm assuming you don't tune in for our freak show field trips or our best of the year episodes. <laughs> you know, There's lots of episodes where we do recent movies. Uh, <laughs> Sean Roger writes in and says, it up. What's that? So we like to shake it up. There you go. Sean Roger writes in and says, ah, you're taking us back to the year 2019. Hang on to your hats, people. I mean, look at, just, just look around right now. It was pretty different. (laughs) Uh, Teresa Ann writes in and she says, I only heard quote unquote good things about this movie. (laughs) We'll get to it. (laughs) Uh, Michael Whitaker writes in and says, oh shit, I did hear about this one. It puts the crazy in crazy awful. I mean, sure, it tries. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, that's two words. And I don't agree with that. Sentence, well, but okay. You got to have goals, right? Uh, Peter Gatt writes in and says, after recalling what I thought of this film, I'd rather have another mini stroke. Apparently, other than watching it again. <laughs> wow. Yikes. Jesus. <laughs> and Scott <laughs> Haincheck says, holy shit, this movie is so bad. It's a tough call between this and replicas for the worst movie of 2019. Now I kind of want to watch replicas because I don't know anything about that. Yeah. That's that one with uh, uh, yeah, Keanu know. Reeves. Yeah, I think it is. I don't recall that I movie at all. It. it was another one that was like dumped in the early year and barely had any kind of promotion. It came and went inside. Uh, yeah. uh, about, um, was it last week? Two weeks ago, we watched The Relic. Simon Carter writes in and says, I can't get past Tom Sizemore's sex tape. Is it just me? Seriously, that tape ruined some great movies for me. <laughs> I had can't forgotten that about I, that until me you mentioned too. it. So thank you. I we just want to remind you, Simon, just because it's on the internet doesn't mean you have to watch it. Mars Cobra 18 <laughs> writes in and says, The Relic is an awesome movie. There's some fun stuff. There's some fun stuff. Yeah. <clears throat> yeah. Well, digging into the Wayback Machine about Tammy and the T-Rex, R.J. Skorenke writes in and says, Denise Richards had a nice body and a nice ass in this movie. I would say she she still does. (laughs) Yeah, she's still looking pretty good. All right, for those of you who haven't seen Tammy and the T-Rex, just try and look up the final climactic scene from the uncut version of Tammy and the T-Rex. There was a climax. There was a climax. Bam. It was uh, about our movie, The Delta Force. Straw Dog 78 oh, wow. says uh, the Invasion USA is way overdue on the freak show. But he says, did you know that when Chuck Norris visited U.S. troops in Iraq, he was the only WMD they ever saw in the country? Oh, I should have known it was a setup for a joke. <laughs> oh, no. That's why I had to read it. I was like, well, these are older comments, but, you know, you got to go with your Chuck Norris jokes. <laughs> all right. So thank you all for writing in. Uh, we hope you'll do so uh, again. Quick, quick shot. Quick uh, I want to say a quick shout out to um, Johnny, New Jersey, one of our faithful listeners. Um, he's been going through some rough stuff the past few months. I know we all have with what's going on, but he's suffered a couple losses and he's going through a lot. So I just want to say we're with you, dude. 
You're part of the Freak Show family. We love you. We support care, you. Yeah, sorry yeah. to hear that, man. Hope things turn around for you. Yeah. Yeah. Well, don't watch this movie. It won't help. Yeah, this one's not going to help you. So, uh, well, wait, <laughs> no. or will it? We don't know. We're going to come around in the room and tell you what individually we thought of tonight's movie called Serenity. And we're going to. I have a question. Sean. Oh. Uh, Colin, since we're um, uh, not at a round table, uh, as we usually are, um, should you be going first every time? Should we mix it up? Get somebody else's perspective <laughs> this first. This is definitely the time to figure it out. I know. Uh, <laughs> well, we can't go with her. It's her movie. We can't go Why first. Holly. Holly. <laughs> Holly. <laughs> what did you think about tonight's movie, Serenity? Serenity. Serenity. This. <laughs> this movie was bonkers. It was bad shit crazy. And I had so much fun every second of it. It, it's terrible. It is a terrible movie. The plot is ridiculous. It's it's hard to follow for the most part. From the like the first act, it's hard to follow. You don't know what's happening, but it is so much fun. It is so crazy in just the best way. <laughs> I, I I I hate saying that because it makes me sound like it's a good movie, but it's not. It's a terrible movie. It's just so much fun. Because obviously we like watching terrible movies sometimes, and this is a spectacular version of that. It's entertaining. I was never bored at all. I was never bored. Um, visually, it's a weird movie. There's a lot of interesting choices. There's uh, there's a terrible CGI shark that I wish I still I'm still not sure why we even went there, but we did. Um, yeah, visually Lots it's a very good strange. tropical location porn. That's what I was just going to say. If yeah. like during quarantine, it's probably not a good time to watch it. Cause you're really want to going to want to go on vacation for sure. I know I do now. I want to go live on an Island. Um, but I think this stupid, crazy movie was like tons of fun. And I, I think, <laughs> I think people should watch it. <laughs> I, I feel stupid saying that, but I really do. <laughs> I, think, I think people should watch this movie. <laughs> Because it's crazy and it's fun, and I think we need crazy fun right now. So I'm gonna recommend Serenity. Sean, what did you think? Um, uh, when I first saw the trailer for this movie, I was like, I'm never going to watch that. <laughs> then I heard what it was, and so I had the ending spoiled for me before I saw ever saw this movie. When I heard like, what it was, I wanted to watch the movie. Because I wanted to see how that was going to play out because it sounded nuts. Because that is not what I was expecting from this movie. Like we said, however they presented it in the marketing, not what I thought it was going to end up being. Um, This movie is, it really is crazy. I don't know. I don't know. I don't know. (laughs) Can I... uh, are we all going to sit here and recommend people watch this crazy piece of the... No, uh, no I'm going to say no. <laughs> I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to stick with it. I'm going to say no. Because I don't want... I don't think anyone... I'm sure a lot of people out there want to see Anne Hathaway calling someone daddy for an hour and a half. But this is not the way I wanted to see it. Not like this. <laughs> not, I feel bad for Anne Hathaway in this movie for the role she played. Ah, or had to play. I don't... Ooh, um... I'm not rooting for anybody in this. I don't like any of these people. Uh, I think it's, it is, I mean, it's rather disturbing. Um, the elements we talked about, Colin, um, man, but you, you I wasn't bored. God damn it. <laughs> no, no, don't, don't watch this movie. Just listen to this podcast. Um, and if you, I don't know, but no, maybe if you hear what, that it's a video game or, and that you're just like, wait, what? And if, if then maybe go see it like I did, because I wanted to see it after I heard that. So I don't know. I'm not going to re- recommend it, but hey, do what you want, man. It's quarantine. It's crazy times out there. So I'm going to that's a, that's a pass. That's a no on Serenity. Uh, Colin, what did you think about tonight's movie Serenity? Well, I got an answer for your bad CGI shark. It's a video game movie. It's a video game shark. Um, oh yeah, yeah. True. This movie True. has about yeah. all the appeal of a. I mean, it's it's fascinating in kind of a car wreck kind of way as you're driving past the car wreck kind of thing. You got to crane your head and kind of look. Um, 
Okay, so I'll tell you this. The the way that I went into the movie, I it, it didn't take long before I was starting to key in on the idea that there was something else going on. And so that what happens to me in those types of situations, I know, this is just the way I watch movies, I almost kind of disconnect from the plot that's happening as my mind is working, trying to figure out what all the signals are. And so, you know, it's almost like trying to figure it out entertained me at least until the movie like said because it was right about i think the time that the guy was like here's what's going on i was like here's what's going on and then like a scene later it was like okay <laughs> so i caught up with the movie to, like right when it was uh unveiling its uh surprise and then once that happens then there's nothing left to figure out then you're like why is this movie still going on for like another hour and then it presents yeah. these uh you know because then it's like, okay, well, then none of these people are like, I cannot emotionally invest in characters who aren't there. If that makes any kind of sense when you're watching a movie about people who don't exist and are played by actors. But were you the, able to emotionally invest in Westworld at all? No, that's the problem that I have with those. Really? Yeah. Because I'm like, well, you know, uh, you know, these characters are not real characters. They're robots. Yeah. They're but programmed to behave this way. <laughs> Yeah, which is what uh, the whole show's about. But at least in that, that is what that show's about, right? But this one is playing fast and loose with that because I don't actually believe that like this character is self aware. I don't understand how that's possible. In Westworld, it goes way out of the way to explain. You know, here's the you know human like brain synapses that we put into these characters and whatever. Um, this one, you know, it was like once the rule guy showed up, I'm like, this makes no logical sense at all in any kind of way that you, that, you know, that I can get into it. Um, and then it starts going down this very bizarre, morally slippery slope where I'm like, well, you're not appealing to video game fans because you're insulting them. This is the criticism that's been made about video games forever. Right. Uh, you're not appealing to film noir fans because now all of a sudden you've gone into you know, video game territory. So I don't know who the fuck the audience is for this movie and what it seems to be saying, you know, that, uh, it's, uh, you know, a good thing. If you're a paranoid, crazy person who is on a single minded, you know, quest to murder your, uh, stepdad and you know, the, the, the whole movie will cheer it on. It reeked to me like this movie was actually written by a psychopath. Like this is a psychopath's wet dream because <laughs> this is, you know, like how you think, you know, like this, these are the things that you want to have happen. This is the way that you see the world. It's like, it's all fixed. You know, it's like the whole thing's against you and uh i will be completely justified and i'll be actually cheered as a hero if i murder uh you know it was just like what the f i don't know i had it's like uh, travis bickle created a video game yes yeah yeah which makes you wonder about like the guy who wrote it then it's like well you know what was he trying to say what was the message he was trying to get across because it's conflicting signals you know what i mean it's like it's a good thing that the you know the kid gets reunited with his dad through all this adversity and whatever but the way that he gets there is like, this is just so morally fucking bankrupt that, uh, no, I'm not going to recommend this movie. I mean, it's a, it is a train wreck, uh, you know, for all the reasons I get it, you know, I just described. So no, I'd say pass on serenity. It's a, it's a bad movie. Uh, Michaela, what'd you think? I, I agree with a lot of what Holly was saying. Like, I, I really think this movie is a matter of uh, seeing is believing. I think you kind of really got to just experience it and let it wash over you. I think it's absolutely insane. I think that I, I totally understand why the people involved signed on. Cause I feel like if you're reading, just reading the script and imagining it in your head, it probably does feel like neo noir inception, right? Like I could totally mm -hmm. see why on paper, it sounds like a good idea. So I don't fault any of those people for being involved. I think mm -hmm. it's really poorly edited. It obviously has really bad writing and really weak points at it. In writing and it focuses on completely wrong things at times but it I, I it's insane like i still can't i'm still so hung up on the fact that like this is a movie where a teenage boy coded a game where he fucks his mom in this game like if i'm <laughs> making a video game and my mom's involved i'm not doing anything close to that like <laughs> you know and that that's insane to me and that's insane that like in his mind, that's the best way to keep the memory of his dad alive. Like that's his best approach to coping with that. Uh, <laughs> I think you got to see it just cause it's like, 
wow, I've never seen anything like this. This is insane. And it's insane that it came out last year and yet no one has heard of it. Like, it kind yeah. of makes me wonder if it'll become like a cult classic in like 10 years. You know, it's no. insane, <laughs> like, you know, no way. <laughs> you say that, Sean, crazier things. Although I'm this close to seeing if the Blu-ray has a director's commentary on it. Yeah, see? see, I knew it. I fucking knew it, Sean. See, you're, you'll do that, but you won't recommend it. <laughs> no, I will. Uh, no, I think you got to see it just because it's just so wild. And like some of the lines we were telling you that are in this, it's I mean, and like it's well it's like well made and well shot for the most part it's like it's big budget it's got big stars in it mcconaughey looks great in it lots of mcconaughey but if you're into that like it's there's a lot lot of of there's a lot of good things here you know so i think uh i mean even if you know the twist it's still worth watching and i think like watching it a second time knowing the twist like you pick up on a lot more things along the way instead of just being like oh that was weird like you understand why it was weird. So mm-hmm. I think you should definitely check out Serenity. All right. There you go. We're, we're a split group on Serenity. So you'll have to make up your own mind. Next week, we're going to watch a movie that's chosen by Colin. Yes, Sean. Colin, Colin, are you there? I can't see you. <laughs> <laughs> what are we going to be watching next week? Uh, next week, we're going to go diving way back into the archives. This might make Michaela happy. We're going to bring a werewolf movie to the show. We're going to watch Hammer Films, The Curse of the Werewolf with Oliver cool. Reed. Uh, so that'll be next week on the Saturday Night Freak Show. And until then, ladies and germs, the basement is going dark.